Hello and welcome to this podcast about dermoscopic features of cutaneous BAP1 inactivated melanocytic tumors or BAPOMAS. I am Dr. Oriol Yelmos from Barcelona. BAP1 inactivated melanocytic tumors or Bisner's nevi or BAPOMAS present as orange to red translucent papules, typically located on the torso or scalp. Clinically, they resemble intradermal nevi or skin bags. However, they have peculiar histologic and genetic findings. The histology of these lesions presents with a biphasic population. On one hand, typically located in the center of the lesion, there is a spizoid atypical population, which is BAP1 negative and BRAF positive. And together with this population, at the periphery, there is typically a normal melanocytic population that is BAP1 positive and BRAF negative. These lesions are important because when they present in multiple numbers, they are typically associated with BAP1 germline mutations. These mutations have been associated with an autosomical dominant cancer syndrome, since BAP1 is a tumor suppressor gene. This cancer syndrome typically presents with uveal melanoma, cutaneous melanoma, renal cell carcinoma, mesothelioma, meningioma, among others. However, single papomas can also occur sporadically without an increased risk for cancer. Therefore, it is very important to identify this lesion since it may allow us to identify individuals at a higher risk for internal malignancy. In this sense, dermoscopy seems an ideal tool to identify these lesions, and recently we have published this study coordinated by the International Dermoscopy Society in which we aim to describe the different clinical and dermoscopic features of BAP1 inactivated melanocytical tumors. Together, we also wanted to elucidate which features were more commonly associated in patients carrying BAP1 germline mutations. In this sense, we performed a case control study in which we included 47 lesions coming from 31 patients and 80 controls, uh, including lesions in the differential diagnosis, such as intradermal nevi skin packs, among others. Regarding the dermoscopic structures, what we have identified is that in the group of papomas, structural spink to tan areas were the more, most commonly found feature, followed by different kinds of vessels, followed by irregular dots and globules, and also it was not uncommon to find pigmented network. When we compare these findings with the controls, what we could see is that it was statistically more common to find irregular dots and globules in the papomas, together with the presence of structural spin to tan areas. When we grouped these features into patterns, we identified five dermoscopic patterns. The first one and more, and more common was the presence of structural spin to tan areas with eccentric clots at the periphery. Here we can see some of these examples in which we see this presence of uh, structural central uh, spin to tan areas surrounded by these irregular dots and globules at the periphery. The second most common pattern was the presence of structural spin to tan areas surrounded by radial vessels, in which we can see those vessels can adopt different morphologies. The third pattern was the presence of structural spin to tan areas with no other features, such as in this case, or this case located on the scalp. Another feature that we identified that was actually pretty peculiar was the presence of a network, a pigmented network, uh, throughout the lesion, but with the presence of raised homogeneous pink to tan areas. And lastly, we have also identified the globular pattern. When we compared those patterns among the cases and the controls, we could see that the structural spin to tan areas with irregular eccentric clots was only found in the cases and we, it was not identified in any of the controls, as well as the network with the raised structural areas that were not identified in the controls. Another feature, another, sorry, another um, pattern that was more commonly found in the cases was the structural less pink areas with radial vessels at the periphery. However, and interestingly, when we compared the papomas that were syndromic versus the cases that were sporadic, 
what we could see is that it was more common to find the structural sphincter-tan areas with atypical eccentric clots in the syndromic cases, therefore in the cases that carried above one germline mutation, and the same happened with uh, the pattern of pigmented network with raised structuralist areas. On the other hand, the globular pattern was more common in the sporadic cases. Therefore, what we could uh, conclude is that actually uh, we are not facing just one kind of pattern, but a spectrum of different patterns, since we could identify multiple of these lesions in the same patients, of course, in patients who carried BAP1 germline mutations. To conclude, in, we have described the different patterns of Tumors or BAP1 inactivated melanocytic tumors that are actually these five dermoscopic patterns that you can see here. And among those patterns, the two uh, that were most commonly found in syndromic cases were, were the presence of a structural spring to tan area with eccentric irregular clots and the presence of a network with raised structuralist areas. However, the presence of uh, different of these lesions may raise a suspicion for a BAP1 inactivated uh, melanocytic tumor, and identifying these lesions may be crucial to identify such patients who are at an increased risk for internal malignancies. I hope you have enjoyed this podcast and that you have learned something interesting today. Thank you for your attention.